In the previous video, we executed the page rank algorithm by multiplying the hyperlink transition matrix by the latest page rank vector until the rank vector converged. Today, we will do a deeper analysis, discuss what the page rank algorithm has to do with the search engine, and then bring up the topic of a potential issue with the page rank algorithm we have learned so far. Up to this point in this video series on page rank, we computed this page rank vector for this hyperlink internetwork. Starting from an initial page rank vector of equal values, we did iterative multiplications of the transition matrix and the latest page rank vector. The iterations stopped when we found that the page rank vectors of two consecutive iterations were almost the same. This process can be written using this formula, r equal to m times r, where m is the transition probability matrix and r is the rank vector. On the right side of this formula, we multiply the transition matrix by the column vector version of the page rank vector. The result will be a column vector. We are keeping that updated column vector in the variable r. In a programming style, we will write m times the previous rank vector r underscore prev on the right side. The resultant column rank vector will be kept in the variable r underscore new. That is, after the execution of this line, r new contains the latest rank vector and r prev contains the previous rank vector. Let us outline the pseudocode of the page rank algorithm. I will write the pseudocode in Python fashion. Let us say that we are writing a page rank function which has two parameters. One, the transition matrix, which is a column stochastic matrix, and the second element is the number of websites in the network. The second parameter is redundant because the number of rows or the number of columns in the transition matrix is equal to the number of websites. We are still using the second parameter for better clarity. Notice that our initialization is a column vector with values equal to 1 over n, where n is the number of websites. In the beginning, R new and R prev will be such a uniform column vector that sums up to 1. We create a row vector that has all 1s. Then we transpose the row vector so that it becomes a column vector. Then we multiply it by 1 over n, making all the elements of the vector 1 over n. This is a pseudocode. In a video later, we will see that the implementation of this column vector is done with a matrix of n rows and one column, which is far less confusing than how it is explained here. To simplify, this is a column vector which contains all uniform values that sum up to 1. For three websites, this initial rank vector will contain 1 over 3, 1 over 3, and 1 over 3, like this one. For four websites, this column vector will contain four 0.25s. For an internet of five web pages, the initial rank vector will contain five 0.2s, so and so forth. So we have our new and our prev. For the initialization, it does not matter what our new has, we just need to make sure that it is a column vector. Our prev must have the initialization as shown here. Now I am writing a while loop so that the multiplication can be repeated. It is an infinite loop. That means I will break it somehow at some point. Before that, let us make sure that after computing the new rank vector, r new, before repeating this line, we copy r new to r prev, so that in the next iteration, the latest computed rank vector is used. If this keeps iterating, there will be a time 
when R priv and R nu will be almost the same. That is, the rank vector will converge. At that time, we should break this loop. We put a check here if R nu and R priv are almost equal, then break the loop. After coming out of the loop, R nu contains the latest page rank vector that has converged. So, we return R nu. This pseudocode shows the basic page rank algorithm. It has its issues. We will later see what those issues are and how Google mitigates those issues. In the previous video, we wrote an equation for each web page by summing up incoming importance or page rank values. We had an additional equation that says the summation of all the page rank values of all websites is 1 to assure that the page rank values look like probabilities. I will rearrange things a bit to create a space to demonstrate the work that I will be doing on the screen. Here is the converged page rank vector. Here are the equations. Here is our big internet work, which has just three web pages. Based on the page rank values in the rank vector, website C is the most important website. Website A is the second most important one, and then website B. Instead of doing all these matrix multiplications, if we used these equations to do some algebraic calculations, we could end up with the same values for websites A, B, and C. Let's see if this is correct. I will quickly solve it in fast forward mode. Notice that the value of B is already equal to what we received from the page rank algorithm using matrix operations. The value for C is matching exactly the value of C that we received from the page rank algorithm using matrix operations. Now finally, since we have the values for B and C, we can use the equation A plus B plus C equal to 1 and replace the values of B and C to find out the value for A. 0.272727 which is exactly equal to what we have the value for A using matrix operations. Therefore, whatever we can solve using algebra, we can solve it using the matrix multiplication operations between the transition matrix and the latest page rank vector. One issue with the algebra-based solution is that it is hard to implement where the process we used to multiply two matrices, that is the transition matrix and the latest page rank vector, that process can be implemented easily. Now let's say that this is our page rank vector. How a search engine uses this page rank vector? The search engines pre-compute all these page rank values of all the websites. Whenever someone searches for something, let's say if someone is searching for generative adversarial network, the search engine has a very good indexing. It can quickly retrieve which websites contain the phrase generative adversarial network very quickly and then it sorts those websites based on the page rank values those websites have. That is, search engines practically pull up the most popular web pages and puts them in the first page of the search results because they are more popular, because those websites are cited by other websites. Of course, this is the vanilla page rank algorithm. It has some severe issues, one of which is commonly known as a spider trap. An example of a spider trap can be shown this way. Let's say that we have three websites, A, B, and C. 
and there are hyperlinks between them now let's say that this website c has only incoming links and its own outgoing link comes back to itself if you keep running the algorithm where you multiply the transition matrix by the latest rank vector you keep iterating this and at some point you will find that website a has a zero page rank value website b has a zero page rank value and website c has page rank value of one that means website c will be stealing all the page rank juice from the entire network because it does not distribute anything any importance to other websites so all the importance values will end up being here a spider trap can kill the page rank algorithm a website could hyperlink to itself and no other websites to take out all the page rank juice from the internet of course, given some structural connectivity with the rest of the internet via hyperlinks from other websites. The next video focuses on spider traps and Google's mitigation on the spider trap issue. Before you attempt to watch the next video, smash the like or dislike button based on if you liked or disliked this video. Be sure to subscribe anyway.